Hi, I'm Sarah Brown, and I'm joined today by one of my favorite bands, Les Van Hey, Sarah. Hi. What's up? Hi, Sarah. Welcome to Jonesboro. Welcome to Arkansas State University. Thank you. Thank Home you. Of Howl. Home of Howl. 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 Howl, yes. Howl, yes. Howl, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Would you guys mind to introduce yourselves? I'm Diego. I'm Derek. I'm Jerry. I'm Emilio. Okay, great. I'm just and we are. The last band we're in. That's right. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and jump right in. I got some questions. Would you guys mind to explain how you guys came together to form the Last Bandoleros? Um, well, we we started uh, I, initially. Uh, Emilio, myself, uh, Jerry, and Diego are all from San Antonio, Texas, and I moved to New York uh, many years back, where I met Derek, who's a native New Yorker, and uh, Derek and I uh, started working together in New York. And then when we go back, when I go back to San Antonio, I connected with Diego and Emilio at a recording studio. And, uh, and then it was sort of fast after that we started a writing project where uh, Derek and I would go to San Antonio and Diego and Amelia would come to New York and we would be writing back and forth. And after several months of writing and kind of coming up with songs, we were like, hell, this sounds like a band. Maybe we should just start playing live. And that's the, kind of the, the cliff note version of it, but that's essentially what happened over the course of about a year. Okay. Um, how'd you guys come into music kind of on your own? Uh, me and Diego, our father was a musician, so we have been playing, and uh, music's just been around. I can't even remember a time when there wasn't music around. And I think Jerry played with his dad. Yeah. And Derek, your mom played show tunes. My on mom piano. played show tunes on the piano, and I also went to camp where uh, a counselor had a parrot and a guitar, and he would play pirate songs, and that's when I knew. <laughs> So it all makes sense. Yes. <laughs> yes. Broadway and pirate songs. It makes total sense. Love it. You also went to basketball camp. That's, yeah, a, that's another story. I went to a lot of camps as a kid. <laughs> Where did the name come from? A uh, group text. <laughs> uh, well, it was um, January of what year? 14. 14, 14, 14 2014. Yeah. And we sort of were press for time like we needed a band name because we had an album done we just got signed with warner I mean, we had a name but i don't think it was like we didn't own the rights right. to it or we, we were kicking it. a couple around yeah and so like we were in the group chat and i believe lasso was was one of the names you had suggested wizard sticks was one um <laughs> look at sarah's face yeah. and there was the federales there was a bunch Sarah, that's what i'm saying Say and, uh, the word. i don't remember i think it was jerry who Came up with the last yeah. band. It's actually a buddy. But we we would have several group texts. You can imagine like everybody in a group like throwing out titles, <laughs> uh, and like he said, the Federalis was one. But then there was another band called that, so we couldn't do that. And then um, we had thought about Bandoleros, and and uh, I think it was uh, Hooper actually, our was, friend. Yeah, our, one of our mutual friends had thrown out a. The last Bandoleros. It was just that one stuck. We were you like, first, your last. Band. Yeah, yeah. Band. <laughs> band names are so weird when you really think about them. Like, think about a lot of my favorite bands, Green Day and Pearl Jam. Put the music aside. They're so weird, yeah. right? And I think, I, I feel like a lot of times people see the Spanish Bandoleros and they always say the Los or the Los or Las Bandoleros. Yeah. It's last. Yeah. <laughs> it's last. Yeah, um, exactly. But yeah, band names are weird. Could you guys talk about kind of what your music is like for anybody who doesn't already know? Uh, our music is a mix of a lot of different influences. Country, rock, pop, Tejano, Tex-Mex. And uh, it's a lot of high energy. There's a Latin flair to it. Um, we've got a squeeze box and accordion on some of it um four part harmonies through most of it um yeah it's just a lot of fun it's like it's like uh musical guacamole Emilio <laughs> loves it when i say it <laughs> <laughs> no comment <laughs> harmonies and I've heard you guys talk about your Beatle harmonies and I really like the Beatles so I've kind of picked up on that but can you tell me a little bit more about how the Beatles have had an impact on your music? Uh, just or uh, yeah I, I don't I don't remember a time well I remember when I got into the Beatles I went to see a hard, my dad took us to see a hard day's night and I could feel my hair growing 
like in a veal cut. So that's how deep it goes for me. I don't know about anyone else here. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, it was actually buddies of mine in high school, um, like early high school, when most people were listening to whatever, was on, whatever rock was on the radio at that time. Or uh, My buddies were introducing me to Elvis Costello and the Beatles. They're and good then, friends. Yeah, and then I, I just went straight through from anthology all the way back. And uh, I mean, you can't, it's, it's hard to be a musician and not, you know, dive into not only a catalog like that, yeah. but the musicianship and like the writing. And nowadays, it's, I mean, it's hard to write one good song. And when you write that many good songs, it's like, like it just doesn't really happen that often, you know? Yeah. For me, at least, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, in terms of the Beatles, even if you never even listen to the Beatles, you've been influenced by it's the like, Beatles. Yeah. The Beatles are like, um, water for music like even if you don't like it yeah you like coke sorry there's yeah, water there's water, water. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's true um so i mentioned this on my show last week but you guys released a full-length album called san antonio mm -hmm. uh, but you released it in germany how did that come about and what was your favorite part about working on that well <laughs> when you're signed to a label the the best part about that is not being able to decide when things come out, right. uh, sort of out or, of hand, or right? where. Yeah. <laughs> no, we're we're very blessed to be on Warner Brothers, but and we had a partnership with Warner Germany, and they were big fans, and they're like, let's let's release this album. We had a different release plan here in the states, um, but we had that collection. It was basically our first collection of songs ever, um, and uh, it was a lot of fun to put it out in Germany. And we made vinyl, which was the dream of all of ours. And you've got one right there. Yeah. So the reason you guys are here is to open for Foreigner. Mm -hmm. How do you guys feel about that? <laughs> oh, I like Foreigner. Oh, we're so excited. We were actually talking about on the way over here. You forget how many hits those dudes have. Like, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. The whole night is just yeah. Hits. Mm -hmm. So we're very excited. It's our first time playing with uh, Foreigner. It's the first time I'd ever actually get the chance to see Foreigner. So. Um, looking forward to uh, singing all the lyrics to Jukebox Hero at the top of my lungs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is my best friend's first concert tonight, by the way. Wow! Yes. Cool. Somehow he's 21 and he's never been to a concert. Whoa! Wow. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta remedy that then, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the plan. Nice. So, uh, Foreigner isn't the only rock and roll legend of sorts that you guys have worked with. You've worked with Sting. Mm -hmm. uh, can you talk about how that kind of happened and what that experience was like we wrote him a bunch of letters <laughs> <laughs> um we actually are fortunate enough to share a management company and um our through our management company sting got introduced to our music and got, we got asked to go to the studio with him and for the record he did 57th and 9th we were lucky enough to be guest artists on it played some guitar on it and we sang and it turns out the song we sang on was the lead single from that album. Mm -hmm. So he invited us. He's like, "Hey, why don't you guys come out and maybe you know do it open for, open for me and do you know in the United States?" And so we were just freaking out. And we did a couple shows, and then he extended the offer to uh, to span out to the rest of the world, which was unbelievable for us. Uh, it was a little bit, yeah, it was a pinch me kind of thing, and you know. We didn't know what we were getting into, but yeah, we started playing some of the most amazing venues in front of people we never thought we would be playing in front of, so it was amazing, yeah. So this show is all about eclecticness. I don't think that's a word. But, <laughs> yeah, uh, it is now, <laughs> yeah. I feel like your guys' sound is kind of a perfect example of that. Uh, personally, who would you say has influenced you guys as musicians the most? Maybe we just each go yeah, around. Yeah, we can't one. really pick one because one thing that's really special about this band is even sometimes it may be a tug of war, but it's great though because we all have different influences. You know, we were all doing our own, you know, things before we all came together. So that's really one thing that's special about it. So I'll just say, I'll say the Beatles. Um, I think that's a huge influence in our music. Yeah, I'll say Tom Petty. I love Tom Petty. Mm, he's good. I love Tom Petty. Tom Petty's badass. <laughs> uh, probably for me, growing up uh, from a guitar playing perspective, Stevie Ray Vaughan, blues, Texas blues. I'm gonna go with my on my father, Emilio. That's a huge influence on me, and I, it seeps into our music all the time. So yeah. 
Absolutely. That was pretty good, boys. Yeah. I think we nailed it. <laughs> There we go. So, kind of on that same note, if you guys could work with any artist, alive or dead, who would you pick and why? Mm. Go the other way. Hold on, let me think about this. I think I'd like to work with Post Malone. Cause he's a Texas dude, and I feel like I heard him or saw him on some Instagram clip singing uh, Thousand Miles from Nowhere" by Dwight Yoakam. With Dwight. Yeah, with Dwight. That's yeah. right. I feel like he would dig a lot of the Texas sound that we have in our music. Plus, it'd just be so weird. <laughs> you know what I mean, I like weird. <laughs> Pete? Uh, I just came to my mind, it'd be fun to write a song with Chuck Berry. And uh, just have him take some solos all over our songs. <laughs> yeah. That would be fun. Chuck Berry would totally just be like, no, this is what I'm telling you, this is the song. <laughs> <laughs> and he'd be like, you're right. Yeah. What do you think, Jay? Oh man, uh, alive or dead, huh? Uh, you know what would be awesome? I I've had some thoughts of it'd be uh, it'd be badass to be to do something with Dave Grohl. I think oh, that yeah. would be a lot of fun. I think Dave would like what we do in the rock sense. Oh, I still don't know. It's too hard. I'm gonna have to pass. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> I want to talk to you guys a little bit about your weekly web series around the neon cactus. Here it um, is. That's her own cactus she brings That's to her. Right. Yeah, I love it. So I'm I'm really enjoying watching those every week. Like I can it's good that they're on Wednesdays because it gives you something to look forward to in the middle of the week. Thanks. But uh, I want to talk That's about like how that got started. <coughs> At a Mexican restaurant, as most of our ideas <laughs> start. Really, really. We were at El Compadre in Los Angeles, and we were sitting down, and there was mar mariachis around us. You know, we were talking about maybe doing a video or doing something. We started kicking around this idea of what if we were like in a booth, like at a Mexican restaurant, just talking and having drinks and playing music. It's like, well, okay, well, we can't get a Mexican restaurant, so we'll just go to Diego's house. And then the ideas just started snowballing from there. Which, depending on some days, most weekends it is a Mexican restaurant. Very true. Yeah, we had been writing a bunch of, uh, over the last year, we've been writing a, a lot of new songs. And we've been working on. Um, you know, essentially a whole another album. And after about a year writing, uh, the song starts to pile up pretty quickly. And we didn't really have, uh, because we're sort of uh, in a holding pattern with our label as far as how we're gonna release this next record, et cetera, et cetera. We wanted to be able to start playing and showing some of these new songs to our fans. Um, so we had thought, you know, is there a way for us to do that? Can we do it? And we used Facebook Live uh, to, to test it out. And like Emilio said, he was like, Let's make it something that's so chill, and let's just do it unplugged. And that's how it kind of birthed, you know. And Diego actually had a couple oh, of these. Great. Uh, oh, great! Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, now it's complete. complete. Now it's complete. Come on, your guys. Um, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we had so we had the cactus, and we were like, well, why don't we just all sit around the neon cactus? Oh, there you go. That sounds kind of, you know. That sounds marketable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I did not expect it to, to be so fun, you know. It was sort of a, an experiment at first, and people really seemed to like it, so it's, it's really cool. So, those songs that you guys play every week, can we expect them on, like, an album or anything anytime soon? Yes. I, yeah, I don't know what we can officially say as of right now, but yeah, we're, we're, we're working on something, and uh, one thing that's cool is that we're uh, I mean, that's part of the reason we're doing it on Cactus is that all these episodes are on YouTube and our Facebook. And so people can hear them sort of first raw, unplugged. And, uh, you know, a lot of it too is, uh, depending on what people comment, that's how we pick our set list sometimes. <laughs> you know, so we're adding a lot of these new songs in the set too to kind of field test them in a way, you know. Derek, you are the director and editor on all of your guys' music videos? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what made you interested in that? Um, I stole my dad's camcorder when I was like 14 and started making movies with my friends and uh, just kind of always did it as a hobby. And then later in life, after college, I started doing it to make money, started making like editing wedding and bar mitzvah videos, graduated to hair tutorials. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Like, I can, if you wanted to have make honey blossom highlights, I could show you. <laughs> um, and so I kind of picked up that skill set, and it's come in handy. Uh, it's really fun to, to apply it to the music, because you can kind of, and everybody contributes to the, all the video ideas that we do. And 
Yeah. Well, me and Jerry only contribute in that we're the best actors. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> this is very true. <laughs> thespians. Thespians. You yeah. could call us thespians. Yeah. <laughs> so. so, kind of on that same note, what do all of you guys like to do outside of making music? Hmm. I don't know. I don't know if it's a hobby when we do, but songwriting is just sort of uh, a hobby. It really is. It's like you, uh, you'll go home and be like, I'm, okay, I'm going to chill today. And then 30 minutes later, you have a guitar in your hand. It's like a habit, almost. Yeah. <clears throat> um, what else do I like to do? I like to watch my brother play video games. I did that last night. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I like cooking as of late, actually. Doing, trying to be a cook. Or just cooking cool, cool new things. That's sort of my hobby as of late. I'm taking tennis lessons. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um... I'm such a boring human being. You like fishing? Yeah. I fish every once in a while. Uh, I guess one way or another, it always comes back to music. Yeah, that's how I do. I like a lot of things that are different for people my Love age. That. Mm. But, yeah. um, what kind of stuff are you guys listening to right now that you want to recommend to anyone listening to my show? Mm. Mm. I've been listening to this guy called Alex Cuba recently. Have you heard of him? Mm -mm. He's from uh, Canada. Or no, he's actually from Cuba and moved to Canada, but he's really, really good. It's that uh, Latin mm -hmm. stuff I was listening to earlier today. So I'll recommend his records called Sublime. It's really good. Uh, one of my favorite bands ever is Dawes. I love Dawes. I listen to Dawes a lot. That would be my go-to thing. I saw Dawes open for Jeff Lindsay Hello a couple of years ago. Oh, that must have been incredible. That's awesome. Yeah. What a show. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I really like this guy that goes by Bahamas. He's got a new album out called Earth Tones. It's very uh, vibey. Beachy. It's not beach. beach. It's not beachy. Beach. It's called Bahamas. It's oh, one guy man. named Alfie, but he goes by Bahamas. Very good music. Um, I would say um, Aubrey Seller. She actually just released a new record. Um, she has a great retro sound, and she's an amazing vocalist kind of keeping it with the spirit of being eclectic, what's the weirdest thing you guys like to listen to? Mm. I don't know that it's weird, but I just got turned on to this dude named David Beck, <clears throat> and he has this record called David Beck's Tejano Weekend Volume 1, and it's Tejano music, which is regional, and it sounds just like 90s Tejano music, but all the mel it's pop melodies in English. That's awesome. Oh wow! But it's, he's playing. But, the, but it's the, aesthetically, it's, like, it's, it's like a San Antonio band playing. Wow! It. Yeah, it's pretty. English. That's cool. So that it, it's not, not that it's weird. I, I don't know what weird is. I like a lot of stuff, but it's uh, definitely different. Yeah, weird. I don't. I don't really listen to weird. I don't know by definition weird. I, I'm pretty. Uh, it's wide ranging, but I don't really have anything I would say is like super eclectic that no one's not gonna know. You know, I like a lot of pop music, so, which is you know everybody likes pop music, but so maybe that's weird. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't listened to it in a bit, but I, now that you bring that up, I'm gonna have to make, show, share it with these guys. But uh, it's something that a lot of people would ask you to turn off if, you, if they heard it. It's like German metal machine music. There's a band called Einster Zende Now Bauten, which is kind of like Rammstein, but it's, uh, it's like a lot of sounds and industrial sounds that are not really instruments that are incorporated into it. And it sounds like a machine, but there is a musical element to it. It's weird. Wow. You feel like you're on drugs when you're listening okay, to it. Okay, nice. Um, it's also good to listen to on drugs. But. <laughs> <laughs> um, Paul Stanley, lead singer from KISS. Uh, if you go to YouTube and type Paul Stanley stage bander, <laughs> it's just ice, his isolated vocal of just weird stuff he says on stage. Stuff that doesn't seem weird until you hear it just by itself. Like, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's always fun and entertaining to listen to. <laughs> so go home and do that right now. Yeah. <laughs> I have a game, kind of. It's okay. kind of a game. No card. Cool. Um, By the way, this is the most fun interview we've ever done. Yeah. <laughs> You're doing great. Yeah. 
Um, so I'm calling this game Title Talk, because that's as creative as I can get. <laughs> title um, Talk. And I've got eight song titles on note cards, and I'm going to have each of you pick a card and answer the question. I'm going to put uh, Howl, Howl down yeah. for this. <sighs> you want to put the cactus down for me? Sure. What's the name of that German band, dude? Einster's Ending Now about them. Einster's? So I just Einst, need one? Yeah. Einst. And do I show it to you, anyone? Yeah, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it perfect. I want to hear it. Yeah, I'm gonna play our song. Yeah. Okay. So we each take. Okay. So what's the game? It's called Title Talk. Title Talk. Do I read this? Yeah. yeah. What's your go-to dance move on this song? Just in general. Oh. Um. Oh God. How much whiskey have I had? <laughs> yeah, it might be that. Yeah, this is like a flying, uh, what is, I don't know, like a, like a roadrunner. Yeah, something. yeah, but it's also almost like, like a move. It's something. like Phil Collins in Genesis doing the, I can't yeah. dance. Uh, have you ever actually danced with an Irene? Yes, I have. Uh, her name is Irene Acosta. Her husband, Javier Acosta. They're my, uh, family friends, basically. I mean, they've known me my whole life. That's the only I mean I know actually. Me wow. too. Mm. Thank you. No joke. Sure. Where do you go? What's your favorite place to go in Nashville? Hmm. Probably this place uh, for delicious food. It's called Lachlan Table. It's like a farm to table restaurant. Good steaks. <clears throat> Good everything. No. Every bite is. Joy. Good wine, too. Good <laughs> wine. Full of gamut. Yep. Alright, let's see what I got here. River ma'am, do you prefer the river, the lake, the beach, or public pools? <laughs> or none of the above? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say none of the above. <laughs> I thought well, you were a beachman. I, I guess if I had to choose between those, I'm not really outdoorsy, so um, I would probably say, of those, I would definitely say the beach, that's true. Before I go to the river or the lake or public, I would never go to a public pool. But I'm too germy weird. But uh, the beach is definitely. Dude, I've been to a lake, a beach, and a public pool <laughs> with you. <laughs> when did we go to a public pool? When we were on tour, we all went swimming in Miami or something. We were all in the water. We all had pina coladas. We had like a day off. Oh, I like the hotel. Yeah. yeah it's yeah, so public. Right. I guess you're right. I'm thinking public pools like where kids are constantly like pissing, park or pissing in. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, you're right. Amelia? What would you be doing? If you weren't a musician, what do you think you would be doing instead? And that's a good question. Um, let me think about this. I would probably try to do something in film. I'm not, I, I don't know what camera to use or any of that stuff, but I love movies and TV so much. So if I could be... I think he'd be great on SNL. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, maybe. You're a thespian. I want to do something in, like, something behind the scenes in film. You'd also make a great choreographer. <laughs> <laughs> He's got incredible dance moves. Got four more. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, let's yeah. do it. What'd you get? Oh, ooh, got Adios. It. Good song. Yeah. It's a fun game, Sarah. I like this game. What's something that you wish you could say adios to? Popcorn. <laughs> movie popcorn. Yeah, the way I get movie popcorn, all the butter and stuff is not good for you, but Can't. I have a popcorn maker and that's I'm not going to stop uh, making or eating popcorn. That's a good one. Yeah. That's... Fly with you. When traveling, do you prefer flying or long road trips? Uh, man, I probably prefer a long road trip if it's... Um, nice views. Views, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. As long as you're not like stuck, cramped completely, I'd rather be on the ground, kind of, so I can stop and go chase a buffalo every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Enamorado. Which of your release songs is your favorite, and which of the new songs from Around the Young Cactus is your favorite? Oh, that's cool. Wow. Uh, that's a tough question. Okay, uh, which of our release songs your is your favorite? Um, he also, the dude who got the question is the guy who probably spends the most time with these songs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Probably, he's probably got like 20 going through his yeah. brain. Yeah. Uh, the, of the release songs, I'd say, oh my 
favorite? Man, I don't know. Just right now. Just right now. Right now. I mean, um, let's start here first. The new songs from Around the Neon Cactus is uh, my favorite. Um, uh, right now, I'm digging on this one tune we played called Enjoy the Ride. Is, uh, I, I tell them about that. I like it, the feel of that song. Um, and then the release songs, I'd say probably... Uh, I don't know. I like. I don't. I like. I don't want to know. I like being able to play the nylon on that. I like that <laughs> flavor a lot. Of, you know, I probably have to go with that one. I guess. Yeah. Cool. Last one. Let's run away. If you could run away to any place in the world just for a month, where would you go? It's a good question. You know what? I had a lot of fun. Uh, Mexico City. Good. Really, yeah, really yeah, nice. Yeah. Um, I had a lot of fun in Mexico City. Good food. Good mezcal. Very inexpensive. Good music. Yeah. I think I'm going to Mexico City for a month. <coughs> oh, nice one. I'm gonna go with you. Yeah. <laughs> so I've just got one more question for you guys. Mm -hmm. What's next for the last Pandora? Well, like he alluded to, we have some stuff. We just—it's not the right time to say it right now. I think touring, touring, a lot more touring yep. this year than last. Last year we spent a lot of time. 2019 we were riding every week, so we kind of purposely took time off the road to write a ton more music, but this year we'll get back on the road and go back and see all our lovely fans. Yeah. Hitting, hitting, hitting the shows, yep. Yeah. And then uh, we're really looking forward to Stagecoach coming up. It's going to be it's a first for us, so it's, uh, it's a show we're really uh, excited about, for sure. <laughs>